Hello everyone and welcome to our session today on creating and using a new production BOM. Joining us today is Daniel Palmer from Inovia Consulting. And before I pass it over to Daniel, I would like to remind you that this session is being recorded and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library later this week for you to review and share with anyone. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions box. We will get them answered at the end of the presentation. So now I will turn it over to Daniel to start our presentation. Hey folks, uh, my name is Daniel Palmer. I'm a developer with Inovia Consulting. Uh, I've been working here for uh, actually going to have my two year anniversary in two days. Um, so I've, I've been working with them for little while, mostly doing development behind the scenes, um, but I've uh, been learning quite a bit about the front end, um, and I want to share a little bit of that with you today. Um, going to start in here on how to create a production bill of material. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a routing, and then uh, how to actually use that to create a production bill of material. To, uh, to start your production process. So I will jump right in here. I'm just switching over to nav, bear with me. I have a couple, I have a couple bill of materials set up already. I'm gonna start by creating a new one. I'm on the production bill of material screen already. You get to this this page through departments, manufacturing, product design, and production bill of material. You can also search for production BOM in your search bar, and it will send you to this page. The first step, you, uh, you will just click on the new button, and this will start the process to create a new production bill of material. The production bill of material will define in, think of it kind of as an ingredient list on how to create a manufactured item. The production bill of material and production orders are a little bit more complicated than assemblies. An assembly does not include the routing information that you can define on the production bill of material. And there's also a little bit less complexity in the in the components as well. So I'll go into a little bit of detail on that as I'm creating this. So the first step, it automatically will populate the number. You don't need to keep that. You can update it to anything you'd like if you want to uh, rename that, if you want to give it a more descriptive name. I would encourage you to do so. It will make it a little easier to, to manage these. And you can give it a description if you'd like. I'm not going to do that just for the purpose of our presentation here. The unit of measure code is required. So you can put in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select pieces on that, or rather piece. And we will start by adding some things on the lines. And you can see under type, you only have two items. There's item, which is as you might guess, a standard item in your system. The production bill of material, what that means is you can actually have a, a parent and a child bill of material. So if, if one of your items requires the manufacturing of a second item, you can have a production bill of material as one of the components of the parent bill of material. So I will, I'll add one of those in, but for now, I'm just gonna add in some items. Say we're building a, uh, a bicycle so we can have a front wheel, and I'm not going to make this comprehensive, but I will add in most of the items on a bicycle wheel. So we'll say you need front wheel, we'll put a, a back wheel on there too. So you need one of each of those, and uh, maybe we put in a chain assembly as well. And obviously, you'd have you know, the bike frame and, and some other 
some other aspects like that. You can define a scrap percentage on these, and that'll keep your, um, your item management a little bit more detailed. But for now, I'm just going to leave those as their default values. And let's add in a production bill of material just to show you that we can do that. This won't necessarily make sense as a bicycle because we're going to have two front wheels. And now we have our production bill of material. So this is P00021. I will note that down for my own purposes. And we will back out. So now you see we have this um, bill of material created here. So the next thing that we do, and this part is not required, you don't have to have a routing created, but it is something that I, I would consider it a, an advantage of the production over the assembly. Um, mostly it, it's more complicated. You don't always need a production. You don't always need to use production management, but it can give you a little bit more power. So the routing, I'm going to open up some of the existing ones just so you can see how they're being used. And I won't, I won't create an example for this. Rather, I'll, I'll opt to use some of the existing data that Microsoft has set up in this Cronus database. So you can see the, the bicycle has a couple different steps and, and the routing is mostly manufacturing steps. These aren't items, these are things that, that people or machines will have to do to create this bicycle. So we have a work center and we have three machine centers the work center is a little bit more overarching, a little bit broader category, and then the machine center is a little bit more specific. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the routing because this is not this is not my focus here. I'm, I'm more focusing on the bill of materials, but I wanted to show you this aspect to production management. You have, you know, a work center, and then you have the, the you can calculate the amount of time that's required for this. You can get pretty fine grained on these, and uh, it really helps you manage your inventory if you're if you're doing a lot of complicated manufacturing, or even not complicated manufacturing. It it can help to have this this information defined. One thing I forgot to do and I will go back to my production bill of material, is once you finish creating this, you have to set the status of it to certified in order to actually use this on a production order. So I'm gonna open this back up and uh, there is a where are you? status. We are going to switch this to certified. And now we can use that on a, on a bill of material, excuse me, on a production order. So now I'm, uh, I'm going to show you how to create the production order itself. And once I do that, I want to show you how to create different versions of a production bill of material as well. So I, I'll wrap up with that piece. But for now, I'll show you how to how to actually use the, the production bill of material and that routing that we were looking at. You can create these directly off sales orders, which is a handy little shortcut. So I will create a new sales order. And I'm just going to fill in some random information here. I couldn't tell you why a home furnishing company is buying a bicycle, but they are going to. And we'll take the bicycle, add a quantity in there, and put a tax group code. We'll call this 
furniture. Okay. So we have a skeleton sales order here. And to create a to create a production order for this sales order, you'd click on actions and go to this planning button here. And you can see we have negative one available here. At this point, you just create a production order. And there's a couple options here. I won't go into too much detail on these. I always start on released, which is, think of that as your inaction production order. I would encourage you if you're gonna go into too much depth on these to, to research your different options here uh, as it can get a little complicated so I won't go into too much detail but you you do want to you do want to start with released so I will say yes here and it says released production order 101006 has been created so I'll show you that one that we had just made and you see available is now zero. Obviously, that's not enough to fulfill this. So couldn't tell you why that started at negative one. I'd have to look into that a little bit. But I suspect if we created a another production order, that would pop up to one. So let's take a look. And we'll say, yeah, we don't need to release that for this example. And let's look in the released production orders. Released. Uh, there it is. I spelled that fully. And 101006 is the one we just created. You can see quantity of one, which is why that just brought it up from negative one to one. We open up this and we see we have our item number of that bicycle. And I believe, okay. Yeah, so let's, let's look back into those production bill materials and I will show you how to create a new version on one of these. Starting with the same production bill of material we're looking at. You just click this versions button up on the header. And as you see, there's no additional versions for this production bill of material right now. It's There's just the one option. But say you wanted a customer who wanted a different color on this, you could for, for the example here, I'll add in another, oops. It didn't like that because it was already certified. If you wanna update it, you need to, to switch it to under development, and then you can update these as needed. So I'll add an item here, and I'm thinking that we add a back mud guard And then maybe we have another item, another bicycle, that is going to have a back and a front mud guard. And that'll be a deluxe version of this bicycle. There's no additional versions here. You click the new button and I didn't like that one. Let me start with the example I had open a moment ago because this was just working. So this is a another bill of material example, a production bill of material. And if I click the versions on here, this is the this already has a, a new version. So I, I created this a moment ago. And if I cr uh, create a new one. So you can see this process, we're gonna do 1.02. And the description is gonna be 
call this a black painted drawer. This one will also be a piece. And for now, I'm going to leave the status as new. And I'll put a starting date of today, which is when, when we can start manufacturing this. And I'll add in, I won't copy all of these. You guys don't need to watch me do that, but I will see. I'll add in a couple of them just so you can see the process. And it's going to have one base. We're going to add in another item here. Call this 7003. And we'll put one of those. And just one more. I will I'll add in our doorknob 70201. And then we'll have three of these. I'm not sure the item number for black paint. My intention was to add that, but I don't think you need to watch me bumble around and find that. So I'll click certified to allow this to be used. And OK. And now you see we have another version of that drawer. So it's useful if you have a request from a customer to to have a different color of paint on it. They want a slightly different version in some way or another. You can create custom production bill of materials for individual sales orders. You can do you can do all sorts of things by by creating new versions of these. Easy way to get a little more flexibility on that. And that is all I have about the bill of materials here. I will open it up at this point to any questions we might have or anything anybody is curious about. I am I'm happy to field some questions on this or if anyone wants more detail on any pieces of this, I can go into some more detail as well. So I will shift it back over to Angie. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, we did have a question come up. What's the difference between an assembly BOM and a production BOM? Sure. So the, the assembly bill of material is really more of a list of ingredients rather than how to manufacture something. So if you have an example I, I found on the Microsoft website a, long, a while back, you could have a, an assembly bill of material that would be as simple as a gift basket. And you have maybe a pound of coffee and some flowers and chocolate, and whatever else you would want to put into that gift basket. And, and all you, your employee would need to do is take, you know, walk around the warehouse, find these items, put them in a basket, wrap it up, and it's done. The, the advantage to that, it's a little bit easier to manage the assembly side of things. If you don't need the complexity of full-blown manufacturing, I would encourage you to use assembly management if you can. If you don't need some of the you know some of the power and flexibility that a production bill of material can give you or a production management the some of the some of the features that a production process would have that an assembly would not have i pointed out those routings so you can really you can fine tune how you are defining the process to create that item so if you have machines that are drilling into your into your bicycle rim, you know, you start with a piece of metal and you need to run it through this machine and you want to plan out the time on that machine, you can do that through a routing. 
some more some more power in a production process would be for advanced planning you can calculate the master production schedule with a production um, process which shows you the forecast for that item's manufacturing depending on orders in your database you can also calculate the material requirements that you'll need based on that forecast. So you make sure that you have the right inventory at the right time. Um, whereas the, the assembly bill of material is really just going to be how to, how to put something together, what you need to put something together. If that, I, I hope that answers the question there. I believe so. Thank you very much. If anyone else has any further questions, please feel free to contact us and we'll address those questions that you have. Uh, Daniel, we do have one more question. Yeah. Does the production BOM pull the individual items when it is in production? And is that, this is actually a two-parter. Uh, does it create a new item number so there is only one barcode when it leaves the warehouse? So if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, we're creating, so we're creating a new item using a bill of material. So you, you would assign you basically would have, let me um, back up here. So you, you would create an item and then you would assign it the bill of material to create that item. So it would at that point have one, it would have one item number and the bill of material just defines how you would, how you would create that item. Is that, I, I may not have understood that question fully. I think that's good. Um, let me repeat it again. Does the production BOM pull the individual items when it is in production? So it would, it would create, you would, you'd essentially have a, a parent item and then the bill of material would define the children items that are required to go into that parent item. So you're going to have an item number for the parent, and then you'll have item numbers for all of those subcomponents. The final item number would be the parent item number, is what would is what would be the end result. Would be one or more, depending on how many you're creating with that production bill of material, or rather with that production order. So you would you would end up with the parent item as the output. Okay, uh, so does it create a new item number so there is only one barcode when it leaves the warehouse? It would not. It would not create a new item number. No, it would. It would use the item number based off of what you know the the item card or the item record that you have set up there. That's going to be that's going to be your output item number. So if you have if you have one item with a production bill of material and you have a barcode defined for that item, one SKU number. It's that's going to be your output is going to be that specific item. Okay, they responded back that that answers their question. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good. If anyone has any more questions, um, like I said, feel free to uh, contact us and we can address them further. Um, and I just want to thank Daniel for presenting today and to everyone on today's call or if you're watching on demand, thank you for joining us. We do have a few more webinars coming soon. Tomorrow afternoon, February 13th, we have Richard Pedago from Calumo. He will be presenting on Tune Up Your ERP System with Corporate Performance Management. 
And we have Mike Hoffman from Jet Global presenting on Make Power BI a Reality for Your Business with Jet Analytics. That webinar will be on Tuesday, February 19th. We do have a focus coming up in March in Houston, Texas. Focus is a dynamic communities user group. User groups from Dynamics 365, AX, CRM, BC Nav, and Power Platform are the world's most influential user group communities of technology users and partners. And to learn more about Focus and to get all the details for this conference, you can visit our conference page on our website, and that's innovia.com slash conferences. If you are interested, please feel free to register. And we do have our annual Innovia Customer Conference coming up in April in the Wisconsin Dells. Contact your rep or you can visit our conference page where it has all of the details for our conference. We would love to have you attend. This is a conference that is free to attend. So register now. Hotel rooms are going fast. All right, thank you everyone for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Inovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, folks.